So what we're going to do is look at three very effective ways to learn to hate landscape photography. And the first one, I think, is something that all of us are guilty of from time to time, and that is being obsessed with outcomes. I think it's typical of anything that we pursue with enthusiasm and passion that we become very obsessed with the success of our pursuit in that creative endeavour. And the trouble is, we tend to equate success in landscape photography with the images that we get. Now that's logical, it's natural. It would seem a logical connection to make that if we're taking good photos, if we're taking images that others like, that get positive feedback, that make us feel good about our work, then we are successful at it. But I would argue against that because I don't see landscape photography, and I know quite a few of you also don't see, don't see landscape photography as a means to simply produce nice photos. We see it as a practice of enjoying the outdoors, of getting away from our routine, of spending time out amongst nature, uh, of using landscape photography as an excuse to down tools and reconnect with our true natural environment, and that is the bush, whether that is out in the woodlands, in the desert, local parks, the coast, whatever it is that appeals to us about being outdoors, landscape photography gives us an excuse, a legitimate excuse to go and engage with nature. So I feel that being obsessed with outcomes all the time can be extremely damaging to the pleasure that's available to all of us with landscape photography. And yes, while I certainly agree that it's, it's great to improve your craft and that there is a lot of satisfaction to be gained from mastering techniques, um, trying new things, um, getting comfortable with the technical side of photography and using the inspiration of other people's work to explore new opportunities to create interesting images. Whilst I support all of that, of course, and that's part of what this series has been about this July, it can't be the only pursuit in isolation because if that becomes the dominant driving force for our pursuit of landscape photography, then we miss out on all of the richness that comes from simply just getting out there. Now today I'm uh, heading out to one of my favorite locations with no preconceptions as is almost always the case with my photography. I have no particular shots that I'm seeking to get. I have no output that I'm striving for. What, I'm, what I am striving for is simply to enjoy the simple, delightful, innocent act of getting outside with my camera and seeing what I'm attracted to, seeing what interests me. And if I find something beautiful, if I find something interesting enough, then I'll photograph it. And maybe I'll try something new. Maybe I'll try and improve on a previous image. But it is not my driving um, motivation. It's not my source of inspiration for getting up at Sparrow's Fart, which I did earlier this morning. I got up at 5.30 and went out in search of something interesting and it was just drizzling and cold. And so I came back without taking my camera out of the bag and that was fine. It was just nice to be up early, to smell the fresh air of you know, pre-dawn and to just be out there amongst nature and get exposed to the elements. It was lovely. This is method number one for learning to hate landscape photography is be obsessed with the outcome, be obsessed with getting brilliant images, be obsessed with getting other people's feedback and encouragement and support and you know getting those wows from people or even yourself with your photos. If that is your only driving force, it's a good way to start to hate landscape photography because as anybody who has done this for a long time knows, the vast majority of the images that we take are crap. Or at, you know, at best they're, they're ordinary. They're, there's nothing special about them. Occasionally, all of the elements come together nicely. The subject matter, the way we have composed it, and the light plays ball, and we end up with something marvelous. But it's definitely not the most frequent outcome 
of our outings into nature. So don't be obsessed with outcomes because that's a fast way to end up hating landscape photography. Now, the second way to learn to hate landscape photography is, is kind of fairly close to the, to the first one, and that is, is overdoing the consumption of other people's work. Look, I love to watch videos of other people's um, adventures and explorations for landscape photography. Um, I don't get a great deal of satisfaction out of watching videos about the technical side of photography very much, even though I've talked a bit about that during this past month. I know some do like it, which is why I've done it. I just wanted to put together a series, get it out there, and have my take on these things as somebody who's been photographing um, things for the last 40 years, much of it professionally. But if we overconsume, it creates an undercurrent of anxiety, um, of FOMO, and of feeling like we don't measure up. It also creates this unnecessary sense of urgency to get spectacular images soon and to continue to get spectacular images. And that's just not life. That's not normal in almost anything that we do. The extraordinary is extraordinary because it is not common, because it doesn't happen very often. It is extraordinary. So embrace being average, which I've said before. Enjoy the process of going outside and being with nature and taking photos, but don't consume other people's work to the point where it fills you with anxiety and stress and pressure, um, because then you would just destroy the whole reason for getting out there in the first place. And that ties in nicely with the third thing. One of the best ways to learn to hate landscape photography is to forget why you started doing it in the first place. I'm sure there's going to be some of you out there who started landscape photography because you saw a technical or creative challenge and you wanted to push yourself and you wanted to create something that was difficult and you wanted to succeed at that. I'm sure there are some of you like that. But I think that at least the people who watch my videos, a lot of you are like me. You're someone, someone sort of in your middle to later years, you've had some success professionally in life, you've uh, possibly had a career in you know, a corporate environment, you've had your own business or businesses, um, you've invested successfully, you've raised a couple of kids, you know, you've had some failures in life and you've had some triumphs in life. And now you're just at a point where you want some sort of a release. You want some sort of a, uh, a pursuit, a hobby, a passion, where you can just drop all of the things that normally occupy your conscious brain throughout the day and just get out there and do something for the sheer pleasure of it. I know there are a lot of you who watch my videos like that. People just like me. It's like Seth Godin says, people like us do things like this. And I think there are a lot of you who do this because you want the same kind of uh, pleasure from it that I seek when I get out and shoot landscapes. So if that's you, don't forget why you started this in the first place. You don't want this to be another job. You don't want this to be another career. Well, some of you might, but I suspect most of you don't. You don't want this to be another mountain that you have to climb, another burden that you have to carry, another problem that you have to solve. You want this to be the opposite of all of that. If you wanted that, then you would just go and start another business or you would pursue another career. Instead, you probably want this to be an enjoyable, guilt-free, open-ended, no goal in mind pursuit. And pursuit's not even the right word because that suggests uh, striving after something that might be difficult. You just want this to be something that you enjoy doing. So if that's you, don't forget that. You know, continue to make that the focus of the decisions that you make when you get up and you go out with your camera in hand and enjoy the sheer, simple, unadulterated, guilt-free pleasure of getting out there amongst nature and occasionally taking photos of it. Anyway, that's it for the last episode of this series on landscape photography in three minutes. And this was way over three minutes, I know, so I apologize again, but this is the last one. And we'll be back to normal programming very soon. I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna to return to producing videos every week or whether I'm just going to do them every fortnight. As long as I enjoy it, I'll continue to do it. If it becomes a job, if it becomes a burden, if it becomes an obligation, then I'm going to stop because I don't need it. I don't need to do it. Get out, enjoy yourself, take photos, 
enjoy life because life is bloody short. I'll see you in the next video. For more on this subject, just click here.